Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving an exponential equation. We have 4 to the power absolute value of x equals x to the fourth power, and we're going to be looking for x values. Now notice that we have the absolute value. So if you call this function f of x, and when you replace x with negative x, you're going to get 4 to the power absolute value of negative x, which is absolutely equal to 4 to the power absolute value of x, and that is equal to f of x. So we get this equation f of negative x equals f of x for all x values, and this means that f is an even function. Obviously, x to the fourth power is also an even function because it's an even power of x. So both of the functions are even, which means that we don't really have to worry about finding all the positive and negative values. We can basically find the positive values and reflect them. And let's check 0. What happens at x equals 0? If you plug in x equals 0, you're going to notice that 4 to the power 0 and 0 to the power 4 are not equal. So x equals 0 is not a solution. So let's go ahead and focus on positive solutions. So suppose x is greater than 0. Now that gives us a simpler equation, 4 to the power x equals x to the power 4. Now let's go ahead and solve this equation by using natural logarithms and then we're going to talk about the natural logarithm function in the sense and then uh, at the end I'll also show you another uh, graph. Okay, great. So let's go ahead and ln both sides, which is the natural logarithm. I know some people write it as log, like Wolfram Alpha, for example, but that's not what I'm talking about. So let's ln both sides. From here we get x ln 4 equals 4 ln x. And here you kind of see some type of symmetry. Let's put the x's together so we can get from here ln x equals ln x over x equals ln 4 over 4. Great. I think we've seen something like this before in another video and we're going to be using a similar approach. So this equation basically tells us, kind of like screams at us, that x equals 4 is an obvious solution. Great. x equals 4 is a solution to this. Because if you replace x with 4, it's going to work. But is that the only solution? The answer is no. Why? Because ln 4 can be simplified. Of course, that's not the reason, but you can basically show that it's going to work like that. ln 2 squared divided by 4, and this can be written as 2 ln 2 divided by 4. And 2 goes into 4 twice, so we can go ahead and cross-cancel this and write the result as ln 2 over 2, which means that x equals 2 is another solution. Great. So it's kind of interesting. It's an interesting identity that ln 4 over 4 is the same as ln 2 over 2. If, and if you evaluate the value, I think it's about 0 0.35, something like that. Anyways. Now, what is that supposed to mean? x equals 2 and x equals 4 are solutions. At the end, we'll take care of negatives. But are there any other solutions, and why are there two solutions, right? That's something to talk about. So let's go ahead and take a look at this function, y equals ln x over x. So I'm going to take a quick look. First of all, I'm going to differentiate it. If I differentiate this by using the quotient rule, I get 1 over x multiplied by x minus 1 times ln x all over x squared. If you simplify this, you get 1 minus ln x divided by x squared. Notice that x squared cannot be negative. Therefore, if x is greater than e, which means ln e is going to be greater than 1, so ln x is going to be greater than 1 if x is, did I write 0? That's supposed to be an e. Okay, if x is greater than e, then we basically get a negative numerator. Which, which means that the derivative is going to be less than 0. If x is less than e, ln x is going to be less than 1, and y prime is going to be greater than 0. Great, let's go ahead and make a table. I know some people like to do the second derivative test, but I just like making a table. What can I do, right? So we have x, y prime, and y. The only critical value is e. And if x is greater than e, y prime is going to be negative. Otherwise, it's going to be positive. Now, this tells us that our function for x values that are less than e, obviously, we have to exclude x equals 0 because, because x cannot be 0. And by the way, I, I don't even have to talk about x does not equal 0 because x needs to be 
greater than zero, that's the domain of our function. Why? Because we're dealing with the logarithm and x cannot be uh, less than or equal to zero. Obviously, it has to be positive. Great, so x is already positive for this function. And our function is going to increase and then decrease, making a maximum point at x equals e. And the y value, you can just find out by plugging it in here. That's going to be 1 over e. So we kind of have a function like this. We, it has a maximum at a point, and that's the only maximum or the critical value. And uh, what about the other points? Um, x is only defined, the f of x is only defined for positive x values. That's the domain. And as x approaches 0 from the right, you're going to have an asymptote. So our function is roughly going to look like the following. If x is less, and at x equals 1, so I'm basically trying to sketch the graph of y equals ln x over x. So um, at x equals 1, uh, y is going to be 0. So our function is obviously going to kind of cross the x-axis at 1, just like the ln x. The only difference is you're going to have a maximum. So it's going to have a bump. Obviously, it's not going to look like this, but I'm just exaggerating here. And then uh, once it makes a maximum, it's going to start decreasing. And then as x approaches infinity, our function is going to approach um, zero y values, but it's always going to stay positive because um, x is positive, you know, so on and so forth. So it's it's kind of going to look like this. Not exactly, but kind of like that. So that's our uh, e comma 1 over e point. Now what is significant about this is that if you look at the, the x values that we found, x equals 2 and x equals 4, they basically appear to the left and to the right, right? So obviously 2 is going to be less than e and 4 is going to be greater than e. And obviously, it's not like that, of, of course. So what happens is when they intersect at a value that is something like 0 0.35, so what happens at this point is I'm trying to say, um, I should probably erase this. Okay. So for the same y value, we have two different x values. One of them is 2. The other one is 4. That's why we get two solutions, and we only get two solutions. So they, those are basically the only solutions that we're getting. Make sense? Hopefully it does. Now let's go ahead and kind of put it all together and I'll show you another graph that you know we'll brief briefly talk about and that'll show you all the solutions. But before we get into that, I want to talk about something else. Remember, at the beginning we said that these are even functions. So if x equals a is a solution, then x equals negative a is also a solution. Why? Because f of uh, negative a is going to be the same as f of a, so it's going to work. Since we already found that x equals 2 is a solution, that means x equals negative 2 is also a solution. Since x equals 4 is a solution, x equals negative 4 is also going to be a solution. Therefore, this equation, which is given by 4 to the power absolute value of x equals x to the fourth power, has four solutions, and those solutions are negative 4, negative 2, 2, and 4. This still doesn't bring us to the end of this video because I want to show you the graph. And here's the graph of y equals 4 to the power absolute value of x minus x to the fourth, uh, and you can here uh, see the x-intercepts, which is uh, where the y-values are equal to zero. And those are going to be our x-values, the solutions to this equation. And this brings us to the end of this video. Well, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.